Oh, man. All right. It's been the, as you can tell, I'm sure, by different settings and attire or lack thereof. Uh, it's been a while since I've covered the masculine-feminine uh, dynamic. And um, I feel really uh, pressed to... Not pressed, but I wanted to talk about uh, one more masculine, traditionally seen as masculine energy, and one more traditionally seen as feminine energy. Um, because I, I didn't really talk about it before. I didn't actually know that much about it before. I realized some things and figured out some things, so I wanted to share it. Um, so in the in previous videos in this series, uh, I talked about Leo being one of the masculine signs traditionally. Um, and I don't just mean like tr masculine in the sense of fire and air, you know, and then feminine being water and earth, but masculine in the sense of being a masculine entity, an entity, I said that, <laughs> right, um, incarnating as a male, um, what energies are kind of wrapped up in this incarnation, and, uh, same goes for incarnating as a female, what energies go into being a female, you know, and this is kind of, this is irrespective of, um, of sexual preferences, of orientations, of stuff, this is pretty much just what gender you identify with, you know, um, whether you're, uh, you know, a, a straight man, a gay man, a, uh, a transsexual man who used to be a woman, basically just the energies that are wrapped up in each gender. So, I don't wish to generalize, you know, people are, are so many different energies, but I do find some, you know, like I've said in previous videos for this series, I do find some truths for male incarnation and female incarnation. So, building off of that, um, like I was saying, Leo is the, is one of the masculine, one of the male entity energies. Uh, and I explore that in another video. If you want to see about that, just, you know, look it up or look at my playlist and it's there. Um, the partner sign of Leo is Aquarius. And, um, I, I find more and more with each day that women really do embody Aquarius energy as a female entity, Aquarius energy. And um, and I'll build off of that, but in conjunction with that, I want to mention Cancer is one of the feminine energies, and partner sign for that is uh, is Capricorn, ruled by Saturn. And looking at a natal chart, um, you know, you look at Saturn to get a really good idea, very uh, an energy reading, basically of a person's father and authority type um, figures in their lives. And so uh, basically to add to the list from before, you know, masculine being Leo, uh, Scorpio, Aries, I also would like to add Capricorn. And not just for fathers, but just in general, and I'll, I'll talk about why, from my perspective at least. Um, and then women being uh, Cancer, uh, Libra, Taurus, and then adding Aquarius. So the reason I find this to be true is because my entire life, I swear, women have been more forward-thinking, progressive, into exploring and understanding the world and in, and in novel, novel ways than men, you know. And uh, men to be very much more, you know, into tried and true, you know, realistic, into being more about um, what can be proven um, instead of the more theoretical parts of life. And uh, I totally relate this to the Capricornian element in, uh, in men. And I, I feel it as a man. And, uh, and then the Aquarian element in women. You know, I find that from my perspective as a man and, and you know, all the, the, those around me who identify as a male. And um, yeah, we're very much about um, purpose, you know, very much about purpose in a realistic sense, you know, we like to make sure that our work means something, that it's solid, that's going to contribute something to the whole, and I find that that's, that, that, that that's, <laughs> that's why that dynamic exists between, I find anyway, between father and son, I'm very much seriousness and sobriety, and make sure you get our job, and, you know, get, make sure you do something of use, of, um, importance and usefulness and something contributing to society because of that Capricornian element. That's all Capricorn, you know, from the society bit to uh, being productive and practical. Um, 
you know, you could also look at the uh, element in males of, of fixing things and of building things, you know, that's all traditionally, stereotypically male. Um, that's very Capricorn. It's so very Capricorn. And, uh, and again, it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing, definitely, in a lot of ways. I mean, every energy is a beautiful thing and a challenging thing. And so that's the beautiful parts of it. I see the challenging part is men can be so hard-headed sometimes. In addition to our Aries nature, we can be so, not slow, but we can be overly cautious and, um, you know, and embracing changes that need to happen. For example, going into the Aquarian shift, uh, you know, in the last couple hundred years, we've seen uh, in, in societies and politics very much dominated by males, uh, we've seen so much traditionalism, whether, you know, it's um, the reluctance and the, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Whether it's the reluctance of, of, you know, giving women rights. I mean, it took until 1920, 1920, 22, something like that. That's crazy. That's just crazy, you know. And uh, same goes for uh, racial rights, uh, uh, sexual orientation rights. I find that very much as the lower order, as the challenge for men Capricornian energies. And I, I think, I mean, we all, I think we can agree... So I hope we can agree that having a bit more feminine influence in our politics and society would be very much needed because, as we've shown, you know, our track record, not just as men, but as human beings, well, specifically we're talking about men here, so as men, we can be woefully, woefully slow in changing from tradition. And that's very much Capricorn. That's not any of the other three energies at all, you know. In fact, Aries is one of the... the it is the first sign of the zodiacal wheel. It's the pioneer. Um, it, it's very much the Capricorn element of being a man, of, of incarnating as a, a male entity, of uh, maybe just so very stubborn and clinging to traditional forms when it very much needs to be let go and to, uh, to upgrade and progress. And that's where I find that women, that your guys' Aquarius energy comes through. And there's a very beautiful tonic to Capricorn. Capricorn and Aquarius are both ruled by Saturn. Um, but Aquarius also has a bit of, well not a bit, they have a good deal of Ura uh, Uranian energy, Uranus. And, uh, you know, according to astrological knowledge now, and in, in my knowledge of astrology, um, I'm sure this will be changed in the future with the, the advent of, not advent, I don't know if I'm using that word right, but the discovery of new planets and yada yada yada. But Uranus only rules Aquarius, and um, I don't know if that'll change in the future, but that's, that's my Aquarius speculating. we got to focus on women's Aquarius. Um, you know, Aquarian and Capricorn energy, sometimes Aquarius can really, it's actually a hallmark of Aquarius, especially compared to Capricorn, to be able to understand trends and to, to see the future, and to see where society is going and where it should go, and ideally where it should go, instead of, you know, relying on tried and true methods and also relying on tradition and, uh, you know, only what's been seen so far. And uh, I'd like to touch on women Aquariusness. Um, <laughs> You know, Aquarius is known for being crazy. That's the Uranus influence of, of eccentric. And I very much find that women, much more, infinitely much more than men, are, um, are very capable in the most beautiful way of letting their freak flag fly, you know, of letting, uh, of just, just being crazy and zany and, and giving themselves the freedom to just be an individual and original and do their thing. And, um, <laughs> I think that. That's why I've heard so much about going into this new age, into the age of Aquarius, of being the age of the goddess. Because although Aquarius is air, it's an air sign, it's masculine, um, I find it's very much wrapped up in, the, in being a female entity and incarnating as a female or as a, a transgender male to female. You know, if you have that feminine soul, if you will. I mean, and everyone has masculine and feminine, but... feminine, Aquarian soul, and, um, 
you know, it's it's very beautiful and very encouraging to see in this Aquarian age women come into their own power and come into power that's been long denied to them by very strict, ridiculously strict Capricornian society, oppressive we strict. And uh, it's very reassuring to me that, you know, when I go to the university here in Reno, uh, that I see, I mean, uh, it's, it's not reassuring to see specifically more women than men, but it's very nice to see so many, so many women, you know, and it does seem, uh, you know, if my sociological trends are up to date, and I believe they are, that women are getting education, uh, higher education more than men. And I, fi I really do uh, fully see, I fully link that up to, um, to just the Aquarian nature in women, you know, of having that genius, you know, and not to say that men aren't genius at all, but again, having that Aquarian element in your very fabric does add a, a, a genius slant to that, you know, even though me being Sun in the house of Aquarius, Mercury in the house of Aquarius, Saturn in Aquarius, all this Aquarius energy, even me as a male entity, does it's not my being, you know, again, I'm much more Capricorn, and I think that's why societally we see that, we see it being more often women espousing the more radical views, the more forward-thinking, progressive views, and then men catching up, you know, and um, that's the beautiful thing, is seeing these energies work together, is, um, both are absolutely necessary. If we had one without the other, we'd have a complete imbalance. There's no such thing as one energy being better than the other. And specifically with the Saturnian energies, with Capricorn and Aquarius, I think we see it, it being best when women are, and again, this is a generalization, men are absolutely capable of being as Aquarian as they wish, just as women are just as able to be as Capricornian as they wish. Um, but I do think that gender-wise, we seem, this is my perspective, we seem to work best when women do kind of, they are the pioneers of thought. They go ahead and they go and, and explore all these new vistas. And then, again, at least in the scheme of society, and then men are the ones who codify that into law, into society, into... And I don't, again, I don't wish to generalize. describe these aren't even literal examples these are more figurative you know of attitudes if you will you know again there are absolutely no limits on what anyone can achieve and uh, you know how much of a channel we can be for energies but again like I was saying and for men with our Capricornian mindset to codify that into law to find the most practical way forward, the most realistic way forward, um, and to, to, I mean, you know, Capricorn is society, it's reality, it's, it's basically, it's an earth sign compared to Aquarian air, so uh, incredible ideas from Aquarius and uh, manifestation, bringing it into everyday life with Capricorn, and again, this is a gross generalization, gross generalization, I cannot say that enough, of, of men and women. Um, and ultimately, as we go into this Aquarian age, uh, everyone's going to be of this Aquarian energy, you know, of this goddess energy. And, um, you know, women with Capricorn energies, with tons of Capricorn energies, are, are absolutely crucial. Again, everybody's crucial. You know, every role has its role to, to play. But as a very general gender characteristic I find uh, what I was saying to be true and um, again we're at our best when we work together and we combine Aquarian ingenuity and genius with Capricornian reality and manifestation not getting too carried away with either you know the last several millennia we've certainly gotten carried away with the Capricorn at the expense of, at the expense of Aquarius and uh, we've had such horrible gender uh, inequality. And women are, are the most, as one of my favorite teachers in high school said, women are the most uh, discriminated against group in human history. And it's absolutely true in all societies, well, not all societies, but so many societies throughout the world. And even today, there is, there's discrimination against women. 
And I see that as, again, the Capricornian lower order, Capricornian element in men. But I see it as a necessary step to get over, a necessary challenge to overcome as we embrace the Aquarian age and embrace the Aquarius and ultimately the Capricorn and all the energies and all of us, but especially Aquarius, considering it is the Aquarian age. You know, I find that this is a, another aspect of Aquarian energies in women, I find, are also, it seems to me that women are so much more humanitarian, are so much more into, um, you know, letting go of status and power and embracing change, positive, beautiful social change in the world, whether um, it's going off to uh, do Peace Corps work or uh, whatever, any kind of charitable, uplifting, humanitarian enterprises I find are very much uh, up women's alley, I, I, again, just from my personal experience. And um, I think that's a challenge for men to, to overcome and to embrace as well, definitely. Especially considering our past, is to let go of his need for status and power and hierarchy. So yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I'm still developing thought on this, um, but I wanted to share what I've been uh, thinking so far. I'll definitely have more videos on this uh, as I flesh it out more for myself and as uh, more life experiences accumulated and all that fun stuff. But um, yeah, let me know what you think. This is a, a, compared to the other male and feminine energies, this is much more gray area for me, as you can tell when I was, you know. No generalizing. I don't wish to generalize, you know. Um, but yeah, I'd very much like to develop this thought process. And uh, let me know what, what you think. Uh, you know, what truth you find in, in male Capricornian energies and women Aquarian energies, both past, present, and future of these energies at play. It'd be nice to figure this out together. So, I think that's all I have to share. Yeah. Namaste.